Hello, this is Scott with Hospitality Podcast, and we are back. And I have a friend on the line today who has got a history as a district director with Best Western, and he's also president and CEO of Jaw Hospitality. And this is my friend Roman. Roman, what? what go ahead and uh, inter- how do I pronounce your last name, Roman? My last name is pronounced Jarowitz. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your history in hotel management operations and that sort of thing. Well, I'm about a 30-plus 30, 30 year veteran of the industry. Started out uh, way back when uh, in the bars uh, in Buffalo, bouncing in some of the bars, and worked my way up through the food and beverage system and then through the sports uh, administration management system and private clubs and then into the hotel side of things with uh, full service and limited service hotels. So I've uh, pretty much run the gamut uh, from a hotel perspective, uh, hospitality perspective. Cool. Well, what uh, what kind of hotels have you run? Well, I've uh, owned and operated, actually. I, I've, uh, I've run uh, the Wheels Inn up in Chatham, Ontario. We had a 300, well, we built it into a 352-room full-service uh, mini-destination resort in Chatham, Ontario, which was about 45 minutes from Detroit on the Canadian side. And uh, oh, okay. that was a, um, you know, it had seven bars and restaurants. It had indoor tennis courts, bowling alley, indoor water slides, racquetball courts gym, uh, swimming pools, and things like that. So it was quite an extensive operation. We even had, uh, when I, just before I left, we put in an indoor amusement park with uh, a children's um, Ferris wheel and some bumper cars and things like that. So it was quite a destination. And uh, we used to sell out about 51 weeks out of, uh, weekends out of the year with uh, a strong crowd from the Detroit area. Then we picked up another 160-room Holiday Inn and put that into our, which was just down the street from us, and I ran that one as well, and then we added 41-bedroom apartments uh, onto that hotel, and uh, that was also a, uh, it was called the Wheels River Inn, and we we ran that as a full-service property as well, and uh, that was located in a nice area just off the Thames River in the Chatham area, so that was nice. Then in 1991, I bought my first um, full-service hotel up in Midland, Ontario, which was a 123-room full-service property and um, had uh, extensive banquet facilities. And then I bought a second hotel, uh, which uh, is the Best Western in Campbellsville, Kentucky, that I still own today. So, uh, And I uh, I ran the uh, Wheels Fitness and Racquet Club for about four years and uh, got my sports administration. I worked at the University of Guelph in the food and beverage area there. So I've, I've got a pretty diverse and, uh, and strong background, plus the governance yeah. side from uh, being on the board of directors for six years with Best Western International. So, Okay, you were on the board with them, sure. That's, you, so you go back pretty far. How many years have you been in the industry now? Well, it's got to be probably pretty close to 35. So, wow. So, you know, started <laughs> when I was 16, so, you know, it's, uh, uh, you, you come a long way, yeah. You work your way up from washing dishes and pans and uh, bouncing right. and all those kinds of things. To yeah. Overall, those um, years of managing hotels, um, what would you say was uh, was your your biggest challenge or your biggest triumph? Well, <clears throat> your biggest challenge is always to deal with the uh, with the guests because every guest is is different. Each each guest comes in with different expectations and different wants and different needs and trying to meet that kind of diverse needs of your guests is, is really the big challenge. However, there are some, I think, some common things that uh, you've got to provide to every guest. Number one, first and foremost, I think your hotel has to be absolutely immaculate. I don't care mm-hmm. how old the hotel is or, or you know, uh, how new it is. If the hotel is not clean, and I mean really clean, um, the guest knows that. Number two is I think you gotta, uh, you've got to train your staff. You've got to train them and train them. And then after you do all the training, you've got to get out of their way and let them do their job and be there to support them, not to critique them and, and um, put them down, but to be there to support them when they make mistakes 
you got to grin and bear it and hope we all learn from it, but you got to be there to support them uh, so that they can provide the, the customer care that um, your guests deserve and want. And then the last thing is, is I think you got to take care of your staff. I think uh, it's so important, especially in this day and age, that um, you spend time training your staff and working with them so that they feel that they're part of your team and you build up a, a loyalty and a common bond between the ownership and the, and the employees so that you have the confidence that they're going to take care of your guests when they come into your property. So I, I think those are really the three most important components. Uh, everything else falls in place. Everything else is a system or a procedure or whatever, but those are the variables that, you know, you, you just don't right. have absolute control over. I actually, I just, that is fantastic. And what you said about support your staff and not criticize. I see, I've seen so many managers um, just beat up the employee when they, they didn't do something exactly as the manager wanted. And and I've seen that as, as, as a common weakness out there. And I, I think the stronger managers learn somewhere along the line that developing a staff does not involve uh, a browbeating, it involves a lot of support and a lot of encouragement, and that gets carried on to the customer. Well, see, that, that's what one of the strongest things that I bring as a consultant is building uh, core cultures and, and leadership programs within an organization. I also do um, sort of estate planning, internal estate planning, which, which is where for family businesses where uh, the father and mother have run a business and then they're children are going to be are going to be inheriting it and uh, yet um, you have staff that's been there for a long time and to bring one of the um, family members in sometimes uh, ruffles feathers and causes problems and that's where I think I can help a lot of hotels as well because I've been there done that lived through it both good and bad <laughs> so yep. um, I know uh, what it's like to be on the receiving end when the family comes in and you sort of get brushed out and I've also helped another family help um, incorporate their family within the operation where there was some resistance and stuff. So I, I totally understand that part of the business, and, and uh, I'm very experienced in it, believe me. Well, that, that is um, that's good. And you bring up, you, you mentioned what you're doing nowadays. You're, it's Jaw Hospitality, is that correct? Yes, Jaw Hospitality Management and Consultants. And you started this in March of 2010. Yes. And 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 so that's pretty much what you're doing now as that full-time president and CEO of Jaw Hospitality. Could you tell us, a, you know, just expand on that a little bit, and and you know what your customers typically are, and how they find you, and and how you help them. Well, I mean, it's you. It's so far it's been by word of mouth, and uh, um, because I've got a fairly good reputation in the industry. And I've got a very strong background in international marketing and sales. So um, by, I guess by trade, I'm a salesperson. I, I mm -hmm. don't try to dictate ideas or, or you know, force things on people. I try to sit down with people and use my experience and knowledge and try to sell them on accepting the ideas and thoughts that I have and uh, try to teach them how to change their style a little bit so that they can uh, get people to buy into their ideas. Because once you get uh, people to buy into your ideas, that's when your business, is, your business and your operations really start to thrive and, and uh, really prove uh, good, solid, successful bottom line results. And um, you know, a lot of times, some of the hotel owners, they'll spend all this time and effort training people, and then for a quarter, an hour, they'll let the person go, and then they get to start the process all over. And then you get inconsistencies and things like that, whereas hopefully what we tried to do is formulate plans where at certain entry-level positions we try to uh, say, well, this, the odds are you're going to get this employee for three to five years and anything above that is a bonus. So how do we mm -hmm. make that happen and how do we structure your operation so it's cost-effective for you and it's... Um, it's encouraging them to stay on with you and uh, work in your best interest as the owner or operator of that particular property. So we try to do those kinds of things to tailor um, you know, programs for each individual property 
in various locations and markets and so on and so forth. So, and a lot of that has to do with understanding the market and understand their position within the marketplace. So um, we, we try to work with each individual property on an individual basis because a lot of times management companies come in and they have a br broad brush approach and while it's good in some circumstances, it's, it doesn't always, um, it's not always a benefit to everybody, you know, in every operation. Right, right. And I think... Doesn't apply to everything. Right. Yeah. And I, and I'm, I personally involved, even if, even if I use associates in, in, um, in my, um, in my contracts, I still am personally involved in almost everything that goes on just to make sure that we're living up to the reputation and, um, and the image that I want my company to portray. Yeah, what what you say about employees having to buy in is so true. If if we just tell them what you know we want them to do without their real acceptance of that, they're not going to carry it on when the boss is not around. They have to be really involved. They have to accept it and absorb it. And I I found you know when I was younger, I was more of a a, a kind of a dictator manager. I I wanted it done my way, and I wanted people to just say yes sir and do it. And I I, I came down kind of hard, and along the line, I learned this this consulting approach where if I if I could consult and get it to be their idea or steer them to their idea or get them to see what I'm seeing, the the results were just so much happier <laughs> and and beneficial. Well, you're absolutely and, you're absolutely right. And, and then you mentioned also understanding the the market. Um, what, would you say do you do like a SWOT analysis, or how do you kind of gain that understanding of the market? Well, well, we try to do two things actually. We we try to do uh, an analysis, like you say, a SWOT analysis of the marketplace, and understand mm -hmm. where their business is. We we do a lot of internal investigating to find out where their business is is coming from, and and uh, you know what they've been doing in the past, and what's what they think has been effective, and and what has not been effective in advertising, marketing, or, or any of their other sales strategies. But then also, I meet with the individual, you know, in bigger hotels, with the individual managers and supervisors, and I, find, I try to find out internally why they can or cannot do the job properly, because a lot of times people won't share that information if they feel the manager's not either going to listen to them or or if they're not going to be taken serious. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, stuff. Yep. and a lot of times, if you take that two-prong approach from a market segment standpoint and then an internal standpoint, it's, it's really easy to come back and marry the two and come out with a really strong plan to make sure the managers and supervisors and uh, are getting what they need to do their jobs properly and the support, the internal support of their management team and also with the market segment, um, the opportunities in the market segment that they're in and how they can uh, turn that, um, those opportunities into dollars and cents in the bottom line. So I, I really think that it's, a, it's really a two-pronged approach. And I don't, again, I don't think there's any one magic silver bullet that, uh, that's a cure-all for everything. And again, some markets you need to step up and other markets you may just have to maintain and do a better job internally, and then other markets you may want to take a look at, at maybe uh, going in a different direction of some sort, or specializing in a certain segment, market segment. So um, it really depends on on the area, the people, because you're only as good. I mean, a, a hotel or a restaurant, no matter how beautiful it may be constructed, at the end of the day, it's only bricks and mortar and mm -hmm. and and steel, and it's yep. the people that make that operation alive and, and, and move and sing and dance and, and get people motivated to go there and stay there. And um, so without the people and without taking, having a plan in place on how you take care of people and really showing people that you care for them because it's a two-way street in any relationship. If you show someone you care, Nine out of ten times, they're going to care back. If you don't show them you right. care, then why should they care about you? Right, right. I, I've heard um, I've heard somebody say that people don't quit companies; they quit people, or they they leave because of people. That you know, at, at the end of the day, that relationship with your employees makes such a huge difference. 
Absolutely. When, when I uh, had my own company and I was involved in the day-to-day -day operations, I used to do all the final hirings in, in my staff, uh, for my staff, even though I had an HR person. And one of the questions I would ask somebody is, uh, if I give you this job or if I hire you today, who are you working for? And they would look at me and say, well, I'm going to work for you, Mr. Jarlitz. And I'd say, well, I don't think that's the right answer because I think the right answer is you've got to be wanting to work for yourself as, an, as your own individual entrepreneur. You have to want to absorb all the learning and training you're going to get here and start forming good work habits and stuff. So things can happen in companies where out of, within your control, out of your control, you can lose your, you can lose your mortgage, you can lose uh, funding, you can lose your customer base, you can lose that. And when you do that, then people lose jobs. Whereas if those people use their jobs to learn internally, uh, how to be a good employee and how to learn and pick up new things and how to exchange thoughts and, and how to be part of a real team, no matter how good the company or how bad the company performs, you as an individual can always go on to bigger and better things. And that's really the basis of, I believe, is a successful hotel. And that's mm -hmm. why my hotel, when I ran the Best Western Highland Inn up in Midland, we always scored in the top 5% of all Best Westerns worldwide in our inspection scores, and our customer service scores were always, uh, always up there because um, we believed in our, in our employees. We encouraged them. We, we used to have training seminars for them um, every so many months. We had a budget of $24,000 when I ran that hotel a year just for mm -hmm. staff training. Wow. So, I mean, because that's what I mean. When people learn, they grow. And when they grow, you, your company, your hotel is going to grow because they feel good about themselves and they feel good about what they're doing and they feel more confident that they can deliver what you need to be, what you want them to deliver. And so it's a win-win street for everybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it sounds like you're talking about um, developing people and developing, you know, for their own personal goals too, not just for um, the bottom line of the organization they work for, but for them internally, they can see that, that they're getting trained and developed and they're benefiting themselves. And that, that I, I tell you, I was going to ask you, you know, of any best tip or practice well you've just given us like a dozen awesome little nuggets of of wisdom and i appreciate that <laughs> well, and, uh, see, I'm, all, I'm all about people because to me people are what i mean i still have employees that i hired 30 years ago and worked for me for a number of years who i still get mm -hmm. an email every once in a while and or they'll tell me you know uh, how much they appreciated and that, and some are in the still in the industry, and some are out. But when you get that kind of feedback, you know that you have uh, laid down some good foundations that uh, people have used in other parts of their life. And not only that, I really believe that it's not only a um, a work related thing. I think when you're taught how to build better relationships in a work environment, I think it also improves your relationships at home with your children and everything else because. The more self-confident an individual is, the better they're going to be able to handle um, stuff outside of the work area as well because a lot of the same principles that you use at work can use to be solved pro can be a problem solver at home and also encourage you to do better things, encourage your kids, say nice things to your wife or your spouse. And uh, I think it has an overall effect that really impacts people on a positive basis. So, Do you kind of see anything on the horizon for hotels? Well, I still think, I mean, I'm an old-fashioned guy, and maybe that's a good thing and maybe that's a bad thing. I think technology uh, is a wonderful, wonderful thing, and I think it provides us with new and exciting ways to market and reposition hotels and do this kind of thing and, um, um, and you know, go after different market shares and different market segments that we, you just didn't have the ability to do before because it would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars to go into new markets through the old-fashioned old way. However, I still believe in my heart that even though you can go in some hotels and you got key, a check-in kiosk and things like that, I still think that people want to have people-to-people -people contact. 
They don't, mm -hmm. don't want to get answering machines. They don't want a kiosk. After a tough day at the office, and they come into a hotel, that's their home away from home. So you want to make sure yep. they have all the basics, a great bed, good television, hot and cold running water, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a fridge in case they have medical needs or whatever that they, they have to have in their rooms. Um, you want all the basic comforts there at the highest level that your property can afford for the market you're in. Right. And then... I think it's all about the individual people. It's about how your staff greets the customer, how they treat the customer, how they follow up with the customer, and especially how they deal with the customer if, for some reason, something happens that is not that you 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 know that goes mm -hmm. wrong in their stay, and how you deal with sure. Them. And uh, some of the best customers I've 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 had in my businesses have been the customers that I've had a problem with in some way, shape, or form. There was a, a leak in their shower, or there was television that went wrong, or, you know, their meal wasn't quite uh, up to expectations or something like that. But it's how you respond to those people and how you take care of the problem that will impress those people. And and then they'll make you'll make them long-term customers. And no matter what happens in the industry, because technology is always going to keep improving things. But on the other hand, too, if if you don't have proper systems in place, if your staff is mediocre and everything, all technology does is speed up the the, uh, the chaos yeah. that's within your organization already. So if you don't yep. have the basics in place, you can have you can put ten ten million dollars worth of technology into a hotel. And all you're going to do is speed up your mistakes. Yeah. And uh, so that's my yeah, I, I agree totally. <laughs> I, I just I just had a front desk person the other day who I observed absorbing a complaint from a customer at the desk. And after it was all done, I just I said to the person, I said, I want to compliment you because what you just did when you talk to that person, you weren't shying away. You weren't looking at your keyboard or at your computer. You weren't you you, you weren't. Um, kind of acting cowardly, you were acting confidently with a smile, taking the the complaint as it was and addressing it and and working on fixing it. And that that customers need that. They don't want somebody that's kind of like back there sheepishly off. They want somebody who's going to engage them and and work on a solution for them. And 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 he actually stopped to listen to the person rather than interrupting them or getting defensive to it. Was a, it was a good way to handle it. Well, I'll tell you, one of the biggest mistakes a lot of managers make, especially with front desk people and wait staff in, in restaurants and bars, is they don't teach the they don't ingrain into their into their training program that if something happens, nine point nine times out of ten, it is not the fault of the person. It's the fault of a system or a policy or the customer's expectation or whatever. And if people, uh, if the wait staff or the front desk staff or even the housekeeping staff take things personally, that's where the emotion comes in and all logic leaves. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't teach that to their staff. They just right. and it's such a basic, simple principle. But when somebody yells at you, what happens? <laughs> you start internalizing yeah. it. Then you say, "Well, wait a minute, I'm not this bad person." And then emotions <laughs> start coming out. And then before you know it, you've taken a situation that could have been handled very quickly and confidently, and it escalates into a system where it's blown out of proportion. Emails are being sent, letters are being sent, and all this kind of stuff over what? Probably something that could have been fixed in 37 seconds. Yep. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, this was, this was a great interview. If a company was looking for your consulting, if, uh, if it's like that estate situation or anything else, how would they contact you? What would be the best way for them to do that? They can contact me at Roman, R-O-M-A-N dot Jarwitz, J-A-W, O R O W I C Z at gmail dot com or six zero two three three four six six two six. Super. Well, I I look forward to sharing that, and I, I got again say thank you very much. This has been a great time, 
And uh, if, if you ever want to be on the show again, just let me know. Well, you know, maybe what we could do is set it up maybe once every month, once every quarter or something. You come up with a topic, and and we can have an open open mic discussion between you and I and, and uh, see how it goes. Yeah, it could be like a panelist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can, uh, so uh, we, you might even ask some of your people what, what are situations that they're de trying to deal with, and maybe we can answer some of those questions or something like that and, and see what we can do. That would be fantastic. Again, I appreciate that offer, and I'm going to stay in touch with you. We are friends on LinkedIn, and, and we're, I'm going to follow your posts. So that, that we're, we'll stay in touch. This is great. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks, Roman. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>